Hey everybody, I'm uh, going to switch up the chassis here. I uh, started with uh, the rear end alignment on the display chassis, which we have in our showroom. But just so happens I have a complete car in the shop today, and I want to go to the next step after the alignment, which is the uh, setting the pinion angle. So um, since this car's in here, it's got a third member in it, it's got a drive shaft in it, uh, I want to go through the steps of setting the pinion angle accurately on the chassis. So the first thing we want to do when we check pinion angle, we want to do that at ride height. And uh, to do that, we need to get the rear end up in the car. We need to get the, th the, the housing assembly up where it's going to be at if it's sitting on the ground. So we've got it up on jacks and we've got the tires off of it. So first thing we do is we take this little stand. We, we manufacture these little stands, which are really nice for getting up over the jacks. And then uh, using this little bottle jack, we're going to raise the housing up. So this little stand's got some feet on it that fit around the um, jack very easily. And then we're gonna go off of this bottom cross member. We're gonna raise this housing up. And uh, be careful with this because you're gonna raise the housing up just until it starts to take weight off of the jacks. So once it starts to lift the weight of the car off of the front of the jacks here, you wanna stop and then back it off a little bit so that it's got some pressure on it. But we use this stand and this bottle jack jack this up because it's important for the, to check this we don't want to check it with it hanging we want to know what the pinion angle is when it's at ride height okay so we'll jack this up take the weight off and uh, we're ready to check it pinion angle is just the, re the relationship between the pinion center line and the drive shaft center line so the the pinion is is in this pinion support here and it's driving the ring gear well, it has, a, it has a center line. It has a straight line down the center. So does the drive shaft. So pinion angle is the difference between this center line of the pinion and the center line of the drive shaft. So there's going to be an angle difference. So if, if they were both straight in line with each other, you would have zero pinion angle. Um, negative pinion angle is down, meaning that it's a V shape. So the pinion would be down, drive shift would be down, so that in, in a very slight degree it would have a V configuration. Positive pinion angle would be upward, it would have an A configuration, it would be up. So zero would be straight in line, negative pinion angle would be down, positive pinion angle would be up. Um, so there's a variety of settings for that. We're going to start um, this car out. The pinion angle varies in depending on who's setting up the car, anywhere from one and a half degrees negative to one degree positive. So it can be um, any setting that you're comfortable with. Uh, we're going to start this car out like at, um, from, a, from a zero standpoint, if we're setting up a car from scratch, we're going to put like a half a degree down. Um, so that would be, there would be one half of a degree difference between the center line of the pinion and the center line of the drive shaft. So now we've got our rear end all squared up and our wishbone set and everything's good. So we're going to set pinion angle. We're going to adjust that pinion angle now with the with the top bars to roll the the uh, housing in the direction that we need the pinion angle to go. Now I'm not going to change anything on this car because it's already set so I'm just going to show you where it's at. Um, we're going to use this little digital protractor and this is a very nice digital protractor. We sell this uh, through the shop here and it's on our uh, website but this is an SPI brand, and uh, it's really nice because it's got a uh, it's got a nice aluminum finish. It's not plastic. Some of the ones out there are plastic. This has got a nice V uh, groove in it, so you can set it on a tube. If you were checking bar angle or anything like that, it'll lock itself into that tube. It's also got a nice flat bottom. Uh, some of the plastic ones aren't really nice and flat, so this is a very nice piece. It's also has a nice feature called alternate zero which is here on the end and it says ALT zero so it's got a power on and off then a hold button then alt zero so hold would just mean if it was in a position where you couldn't see it like let's say I was over here somewhere where I couldn't really see it well and I would I couldn't see the the LCD screen um, I would press hold and it would lock it in that location and then I could press hold again and release it but alternate zero is good for uh, setting pinion angle because it's going to zero off of the degree that it's at. So if you set this on, um, for instance, if I set it on this angle here, 
and that reads 15 degrees and then I hit alternate zero it says ALT then it it makes that zero it makes that 15 degrees zero so then if I go to something else to a different position it will tell me the difference between that so if I put it up here on the brake caliper it's gonna say that um, I have a difference of 12 degrees between the angle that I just put on here so to uh, to take that off we're just gonna flip it off and back on so we'll go back to its normal calibration here um, it also has a nice little arrow indicator on the side here to tell you which way to go to go back to zero so if you're if you have it on something and it's reading um, it says that this end's got to go down to get back to zero so if I just tip this other end up a little bit see it'll work its way back to zero so this is a nice little tool to set pinion angle with because it's got a nice sharp edge on it and you can grab this pinion um, at a couple different locations and depending on the pinion shape and who the manufacturer is there's a variety of ways to um, get this and so the, this is a uh, a machined billet pinion yoke so it's square these these surfaces here this surface and this surface are machined square with the center line but also this split in the cap here is also machine square with the center line and a lot of times there'll be uh, the slightest bit of misalignment here and you can take this and set it right on that groove there just like that and get that angle which is going to be 90 degrees off the center line so this one's nice and smooth and flat uh, I'm going to turn it up like this so I can just set it on the top here so I know that this surface is cut it's machined with the center line of that pinion so I can use this to get uh, the degree of the pinion and then I can set it right on top of the drive shaft here and get the degree of the um, drive shaft and then the difference between the two so I hope you guys can see this okay I'll try to work around it a little bit but um, so I'm gonna set this up on here and I'm gonna make sure it's nice and flat and that says 2.8 but I, I don't care about that I want that to be zero so I'm gonna go to hit that alternate zero so now it's made that zero so now all I have to do is just simply slide it up here on the drive shaft you can see now that after I've zeroed it off of the uh, pinion yoke and then moved it to the drive shaft itself it's reading between 1.5 and 1.6 so and it's also telling me that by that little arrow that this end needs to go up to be back to zero so I know that that is down it's in a V shape because if it was the other way the arrow would be pointed down so this is telling me that I've got 1.5 degrees of negative pinion angle that's so the difference between the pinion and the drive shaft is 1.5 degrees so this little tool very handy um, very easy to keep in your toolbox it comes in a nice plastic case so it doesn't get beat up um, but this is invaluable not only for pinion angle uh, but everything it's gonna it's actually gonna come in handy a little later on because I'm gonna show you some other things on the uh, on the car that we're gonna check with this but just like before when I was um, talking about getting the car level and um, before you start lining up the rear and getting the rear cross member level and get the chassis at the right uh, angle this is a very good tool for that because it's very accurate and it's very easy to use so again, that's how you uh, set the pinion angle. If you have any questions, by all means, give us a call.